Hello and welcome to my channel. So if you notice our different setup for today, it's because today's video is a tech tutorial. I'm going to be sharing about how I use PowerPoint to create resources, but I'm just scratching the surface here. There is a lot that you can do with Microsoft PowerPoint, and I would actually like to direct you to a couple of experts, my friends Asia and Lindsay. Asia you can find at the Sassy Teacher, and Lindsay you can find at Lindsay Bowden. I will link their information below, but the reason that I recommend them is that they both have courses dedicated to helping teachers learn how to use PowerPoint to create resources. But today, I'm gonna to show you the basics, so let's get started. This is the first thing that you see. We have a slide, which is, you know, in the widescreen layout, and then you get the click to add title, the click to add subtitle. Now, if we are making a paper resource, we need this to print out in paper size. If you're making a digital resource, like something that would go into Google Slides, we would keep this and leave it alone. First thing I want to do is actually change the layout to blank. So it's gonna get rid of the title and subtitle. Then I would go over to design and change the slide size. Now we're gonna format it for paper. If you want the paper landscape, you're gonna make it 11 by 8.5. And whether it says scale up or down doesn't matter because there's nothing on the page yet, but this is what your landscape page would look like. And if I instead wanted it to be portrait, then we would have it as 8.5 by 11. And now here's your portrait sized piece of paper. Now what we do from here really depends on what it is that we're trying to create. But let's say I wanted to do like a simple standard worksheet. I would then go to insert, go to shapes, and just start by making a rectangle, put it to no fill, keep the border there, and then I would change the height to mimic margin. So let's say I do half inch all the way around. We would change it to 10 by 7.5. Then I would go over here to align, align it to the center, and align it to the middle. So what I like to do is see exactly where everything lands, because what I don't want to do is add text that goes here at the bottom and then gets cut off when it goes to print. I mean, it would be nice to have the whole page and that's how I design my posters, but the, the reality is that your printer is not gonna be printing ink all the way to the edge of the pages. So I just like to have the margin here so I can see exactly where it's supposed to be, know exactly how it's going to look, and then at the end, when I'm done, I'm going to delete that so it won't be there, unless you want to have a border around your page, which is totally fine. Now, if you want to add in text, you can double click anywhere and you'll get text. Let's say I want space for the name and the date. And I would put this up at the top. Now your text is always going to default in PowerPoint to 18 unless you play with your settings. So we'd probably want that to be at point 12 and you can change your font to whatever makes you happy. This is my current favorite, PB pour over coffee. It's just a very clean, beautiful font. So I like to have a spot for the date and then have a spot for the period. And then I usually extend the name line until it fills everything going right there. And then what you can also do is just have the text box go right to the edge there. So that would be the top of the worksheet. I'd also add in text for the directions or we could just continue on in this text box. Now to actually add in the worksheet, you could use a table, which I went more in depth with in the Microsoft Word video. The tables in PowerPoint are not as robust as the tables in Microsoft Word. There was another trick I forgot to show in the Microsoft Word video actually where I could highlight a row and then I could move the border in just this row without it affecting the rest of the table. That's not an option here in PowerPoint, which is kind of a bummer. But I can still do the main things like distribute the columns, distribute the rows. Whenever you put a table into PowerPoint, it's automatically gonna put the shading like this, so I like to get rid of the shading and I like to add the borders in. If you want to change how the border looks, you have to use the pen color over here and how thick you want the border to be. So you'd have to get these how you want them and then click over here to borders and it would change the borders to however you want them. 
So let's say I was doing this for a worksheet. I would click and drag this into place. I could stretch this over. And what's really cool is I can actually size the table exactly how I want in PowerPoint. That's not quite an option that you get in Microsoft Word. The other thing I want to do is actually change the text right away because this is what it does. It makes the top row a heading automatically, like how it was dark blue before. So what I need to do is actually highlight the whole thing, change the size of the text, you can change the font, and then I need to make sure that it's in all the color I want, in this case black, and then I click bold, and then I turn off bold because the top row is automatically bolded. You could add in your numbers, yada, yada, yada. You can add in the questions, whatever else you want to do. If you want to add in an image, this is why everyone loves PowerPoint over Microsoft Word. If I want to add in my image, I just click and drag, and there it is. And then I can resize it, and I can just drag and drop it to wherever I want. So compared to Microsoft Word, PowerPoint works in layers. So everything that I've added here individually is its own layer. If I go to reorder objects, I can see all of the individual layers. Now, this is only something you can get on a Mac computer, as far as I know. PCs will not show this. I just know because it's something Casey showed in the CEO teacher course and everyone's like, how do I get that on my computer? And if you have a PC, it just won't do it. But everything is its own separate layer. So I can move this around anywhere on the screen and it's not going to bother anything else. I'm going to go over some of the shapes that are in here because part of like creating resources in geometry means we are trying to create some shapes. So if I go to insert shapes, these are the options. You can scroll down and there are even more options. There's a lot you can do. These are cute because they remind me of like PowerPoint is meant to be slides. And I don't know if you remember like these being icons that were in slides once upon a time. But there's a lot of different things here that you can use. Flowchart ones I kind of avoid. I typically use like the basic shapes section, the rectangles, lines, and obviously recently used shapes. So this is usually where I stick, but you get a circle. Well, we also get rectangles, obviously. The rectangle is going to default to being a square at the beginning, but you can click and drag it and make it whatever kind of shape you want. You can resize the circle. Now, if you resize the circle, it won't necessarily stay as a circle. There's two ways around it. One way is to very carefully drag it. Just kidding. If you go to like one of the corners and you hold shift down on your keyboard, it's going to keep the size exactly the same. I mean, not the size, but the shape. It's going to maintain the shape's ratio. The other option is to go up here to your height and width. That's about your shape. If you click this checkbox right here, and there's a check mark in there, it's locking the ratio. So as long as I'm using the corner, I can change the size, but it's not going to turn my circle into an oval. Let's see, we also get triangles here. Now, this is what kept me from using PowerPoint for so long was, you know, how do I make my triangle look different? I don't want it to just be isosceles all the time. There's two options. The first one is this yellow piece right here. Anytime you get that yellow box, it's going to change your shape for you. So it looks different. So you can change it going either way. You can make it all the way to a right triangle. Or you can make it just scalene. The other way to get your triangle to look different is to right click and then go to edit points. And then when you're in this mode, you can drag the points however you like. Like I can get an obtuse triangle now that you know we couldn't before, but that's how you're able to change that. You can also add in lines, obviously, I'm trying to think what else we should have on here just for demonstration purposes. Let me throw in the Pentagon. No, you know what one I would like to show? This arrow here, like a pentagon, this has one of those yellow boxes. So I can actually change the shape of the arrow at the end. 
So that's just useful. I'm gonna actually take that one away. I know what else I want to use. I want to show this right here. This is to get an arc. Now this one is essentially a circle, but these yellow things right here, they let you determine, first of all, let me just redo that. I wanna keep it the, as a circle. They let you determine how much of the arc you're actually showing. You can make it the full circle or just a portion, but you can manipulate these just to get different parts of the arcs. Okay, so once you have your shapes, you can do all different things with them. You can change the fill. You can make it fill one color and have the border be a different color. You can change, my bad, didn't mean to click there. You can change how thick the border is so that you could see it better. You can change the border so that it's dashed or dotted. Um, you can also do no fill, which makes this transparent in the middle, um, as opposed to using white for your fill, because if you use white, it's um, going to work in the layers again. So some things are hidden and some things will be visible. You can also right click and go to format shape and that's going to bring up this menu that's being shown here and from here you could do some of those same things you can change how the shape is being filled like what color it is you can change the outline and it makes the outline black and then you actually get more freedom over the width it's not just a certain preset width that you have on there there's the compounding you can use let's say i use like the dash line but I can change the cap and the join. I love to see them round. I think it looks a lot prettier that way. So you could do that. And then for the line, you can change the color that it is. You can change the width to make it more pronounced. Again, I like to just have the, the ends be rounded instead of like flat and square. You can change what your arrow looks like. This actually just made it double ended because it wasn't before but you can put all different things on there and then you can actually change the size. You can make it bigger or smaller at either end, whatever works for you. And then I can do the same thing here with the arc. Just wanted to show this, change the color, change the width so you can see it better. And then I just did a project recently. I was working on the geometry word wall the other day and I just put the, the round dots for the arrows instead and it really showed like this is the these are the endpoints on the arc so that is like the gist of using powerpoint just like the very very basics just to get you started i just thought of something else really important to share before we end the video here so what's really cool about powerpoint is that it's it works really well as a drag and drop but you get these guides that pop up as you move your figures around on the page but you can also get a more precise thing going on here because sometimes you get them to pop up sometimes they're gone you can use the alignment tools under the shape format tab so you can align center to the center of the slide you can align to the middle so now this is like dead center on my page for sure i can take the other shapes here if i hold down control or command i can click multiples I can make sure that they're all centered, except it will try to align to the selected objects. I want it to align to the slide. So I just need to double check this here. Now when I align center, they're all centered. If I want them to be, oops, evenly spaced apart, I can go to distribute, in this case, vertically, then they're all evenly spaced. If I want this to really be like in the middle of the page, I can group them together and so now these are all together. And when I go to align them to the middle, it's actually gonna put them in the middle. It did put them in the middle. I didn't think it was aligned to the middle, but it is. I could also go ahead and rotate this around. Can move it to the top, can move it to the bottom, can move it back to the middle. The possibilities here are really endless with PowerPoint. That's why if you want to really know more, strongly suggest enrolling yourself into a course where you can see everything because there is a lot to explore and a lot of different options. So this is why people really love PowerPoint. It's that drag and drop, the layers, the way that 
you can add something and it's not going to ruin everything else. If you have any questions about PowerPoint, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll, you know, respond if I can. And if I, you ask something that has me stumped, I will direct you to someone that does know. But thank you for being here. And as always, thanks for watching.